Hi everyone, my name is Joe Barnard, and today I would like to look at the recent round of fairing separation tests that I've been performing on the 148th scale model of the Falcon Heavy rocket. If you've seen the most recent video on the BPS YouTube channel, you'll already know that this fairing needs a little bit of work. The last two flights of this rocket ended up coming in ballistic, or coming in without a parachute because this failed to fully separate. The first set of tests that I performed on this fairing a few months ago were just not very thorough. In fact, I only performed one test that was successful before deciding that it was ready to fly. So, to sort of counter that today, we're going to be performing a bunch of tests to make sure that this fairing is ready to go and that it can reliably deploy the parachutes every time. So to get started, let's talk about some of the design changes that I've made since the last video. You might remember that the side pieces of the fairing were missing a chamfer right in between them here. Now I've fixed that since then. You can see here they have this little relief here so that they can easily fold out. I also made a few changes to some of the dimensions in the fairing just so it would all fit together easier. Most of these are not visible since they're on the inside and the outer shape is just about the same. In its current design, the fairing is still in four pieces. We have the base, the two sides, and the top. Now the base stays connected to the rocket, but the two sides are supposed to blow off and so is the top. One of the main reasons that I keep the fairing in four pieces instead of three pieces or even two pieces is because of the available print volume on the 3D printer that I use. That said, I do want to thank all of the people who reached out and offered their 3D printing services to try to print a two-piece fairing. I'm going to be sticking with the four-part design right now because I can manufacture it a lot more quickly if I'm printing on my own printer. That said, I just want to say thank you to everyone who offered their services. Moving on, the only part of this fairing that stays connected to the rocket on the way down is the base. Once the fairing is blown apart, these two sides and the top piece drift down gently. They both have very low mass and very high drag coefficients, which means they just sort of drift down very slowly and safely. Before we get into some of the test footage here, I'd like to explain a little bit more about how this fairing design actually works. So in the base of the fairing, there are two black powder charges. Each one is about 0.8 grams or so of black powder. And when this black powder deflagrates, or when it burns, it creates a bunch of gas. So it's a gas generator, that's what this is. When it creates all of this gas, these are things like uh, nitrogen, carbon monoxide, uh, hydrogen sulfide, which smells awful, by the way. All of this gas pressurizes the fairing and it blows apart. And as for the actual testing process, once the black powder charges are inserted, their continuity is tested to make sure they're reliably going to deploy. The leads are tied, they are connected to the signal flight computer, the chute is connected, the chute is packed, the fairing is mounted, and then the whole setup is mounted to a test bench, which is then brought outside, ready for testing. And so with all of that covered, let's move on to our first test. This first test showed super clean separation of every part. The fairing halves folded out from the bottom, the top half continued upward, and the parachute was protected inside the Nomex or fireproof blanket. With everything looking nominal, I decided to move on to test number two. During this test, we can see another clean separation of each part. In my opinion, this is the best looking one. The black powder smoke is backlit by the sun, and everything just looks really beautiful in this slow motion shot. And nearing the end of the test, we can see that the parachute has cleanly separated from the nose cone as it falls down to the workbench. For the third test, I decided to mount the whole vehicle sideways to see how the fairing would perform in a different orientation. This first shot from above looks pretty good, but if we take a look at the camera pointing straight on at the rocket, we can see some slight issues. You might notice that after the fairing is blown apart, one of the fairing sides is still kind of holding onto that parachute. Now, it's really likely that this would eventually separate on the way down. The vehicle would be traveling fast enough on the way down that the parachute would really likely unravel. That said, I did change the parachute packing method so that we can avoid having this issue ever again. During the next test, things fail in a kind of different and interesting way. I'll play the footage now and see if you can figure out what happens. What you might have noticed in the footage is that one of the black powder charges actually fired a little late. Now, I use pretty cheap fireworks igniters to actually set these charges off, so it's likely that a couple of them are duds or a couple of them light slowly. If we go back and think about how this fairing design works, we can start to see why this is an issue. If one charge fires and pushes these two fairing halves past this point, this hole starts to open in the fairing. Now, this is basically a pressure release, and the way that this fairing deploys successfully is by putting a bunch of pressure really quickly inside this whole volume. We want to pressurize very rapidly. So if only one charge fires and it pushes the fairing just slightly out, 
When that second charge fires, the majority of the pressure it creates will be automatically released through this hole and a symmetrical one that's on the other side here. And basically, what that all means is that that second charge is going to have little or no effect on how hard the fairing is actually deployed. We want to fire both of those charges basically at the exact same time or as close to each other as possible. Like I mentioned earlier, these charges are usually started by using fireworks igniters. These are very common fireworks igniters. You can find them in a whole lot of places, and they're generally speaking very reliable. That said, every now and then you will get a dud. One of these things will take a little too long to fire, or it just won't fire at all, and that's kind of to be expected since they're pretty cheap and they're bought usually in bulk. So coming back to the fairing separation tests, after reviewing the shoot packing procedure just a little bit more, I decided to do some worst case scenario testing. And this is basically prompted by this second charge firing late. I decided to see what it would be like if just one of these two charges fired a couple more times. I did two tests for this. Now the first of these tests seemed to do all right. In the footage, it looked like if I had packed the parachute so there was a little bit more pressure on those sidewalls, the whole fairing would have blown apart like it's meant to. But for the second test, I decided to reorient the rocket back to an upright position so that the fairing has to fight against gravity a little bit more when it deploys. So let's go ahead and roll the clip on this one. It's pretty magnificent. It's not bad, right? It's very bad. Uh, only one charge fired and literally nothing happened. It just created a bunch of heat and a little bit of smoke inside of the fairing. So we have some concrete results so far. We know that one charge is not gonna cut it. We know that two charges is almost always gonna cut it, but sometimes doesn't work. Do we know what the answer is here? What the right move is? More black powder. To do this, I added a third charge at the bottom of the fairing to fire with the other two for 150% the deployment pressure. I wired them all up, I packed the parachute, and even though it started raining, I brought the rocket out to the test site. Given the general success of the tests that used two black powder charges, I decided that I only needed two extra tests with the three charge setup. So long as both of the tests with the three charge setup were successful, I decided that would be enough to qualify this fairing for flight. In each of these deployment tests, you can see the fairing top and fairing sides blow clean off really quickly. Each of these tests were a total success. A quick side note, one thing that's hard to get a sense for here is speed. Let me show you some clips of this happening in real time. That's it. Everything happens super fast, and you can see how having this high-speed footage really helps diagnose how all of this works. Something else that's cool here is that there's about a 20 millisecond delay in between the time that signal sends current into Pyro Channel 1 and the time that gases start to be generated inside the fairing. So the black powder charges are enclosed in this little heat shrink tubing, and they sort of come up to pressure before they explode and, you know, put a bunch of gas inside this fairing. And you can see that delay, which is stretched all the way out to one full second. That's just 20 milliseconds. That's become one second in the video here. So when signal's light turns yellow, that means the electricity is being sent into the pyro charge. And then you can see when the gases start exiting the fairing afterward. And that's it. I'm pretty satisfied with this triple charge setup, which means that it's probably time to start getting ready for the full 148th scale model Falcon Heavy launch. I'm super excited for that. Also, just a few updates here. In the last week, I've done a ton of testing like this, and that's because there was a crew from Vice down here filming a video on BPS, so stay tuned for that. Additionally, if you're wondering, Joe, you said that every two weeks you were gonna have a new landing model rocket episode, and it's like way more than two weeks, dude. You're right, it has been, but it will be coming up very soon. Episode three will be covering landing like design, and if you're a patron of BPS, you should be able to see it within a week or two. Also, if you're a patron of BPS, you'll get access to the 3D printable landing leg files. If you wanna learn more about that, or you're interested in these files, there's a link to the Patreon in the description below. And if not, no worries. Thank you very much for watching. My name is Joe Barnard. May your skies be blue and your winds be low.